So today's lecture has the possibilities of taking you out of your normal, of helping you to slip away from your ordinary frame of reference, considering yourself in your life. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it also may be challenging. A lot. Yeah. We'll see. Part of today's lecture was inspired by the movie Unbroken. I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity to see it or not. But it's a story about Louis Zamperini. He was an Olympian in the 1938 Olympics that took place in Berlin. And at that time, that was the, the stage for Nazi Germany to reveal the superior Aryan race. And it was a time when Jesse Owens won three Olympic medals for his place. And he wasn't exactly a member of the Aryan race. <laughs> so it was a shock. And something that I'm sure stuck in the crawl. But anyhow, Louis performed as a runner, a distance runner. And he set a world record for the fastest lap ever run up to that time in that particular race. He went on to join the Army Air Corps and flew B B-24 Liberator bombers in the Japanese uh, conflict area. On a mission out searching for other members who had uh, gotten lost, the airplane went down. The airplane he was on lost three of its engines and crashed in the water, which left him and two other companions, the sole survivors, and he survived for 47 days only to then be rescued by the Japanese. <laughs> At which time he was then considered a prisoner of war and an enemy of the Japanese Empire. His story is quite remarkable in that the head of the camp in which he was interned did everything in his power to make life as miserable for Louis as possible, repeatedly striking him in the face with a bamboo stick. And finally, it resulted in a showdown where he had to hold, Louis had to hold a beam up over his head. And if he did not hold the beam, he was going to be shot. While this fellow, whose name, by the way, was Bird, watched. And what transpired was who he was, Louis, finally came forth in an undeniable way. In such a way, and it was so powerful, that he raised the beam up over his head after holding it for, I have no idea, it seemed like the movie portrayed it for at least an hour, if not more, and let out a release of energy in voice that conveyed he would not be broken. And at which point Crow then assaulted him, beat him down, and was broken himself. It wasn't too much longer after that that then the war came to an end. And instead of the prisoners being killed as they were going to be, had the Japanese lost. It happened in such a way that they were freed, they were released. Louis went on to come home, he got married, had children, and he was so moved in himself with the experiences that took place in his life that he determined to go back to Japan and meet his former captors those who held him prisoner, and to forgive them. All of them met him except Bird. He refused to meet someone who would forgive him. Now this is a portrayal that I'm bringing to you of different aspects of who we are. By the way, Louis went on to live to be 97. He ran in the Olympics in 1980. Oh. 
in Japan. <laughs> so, this is just to give you a little background of today's message, Shine On. You see, we all avoid pain. All of us seek to have an easy life, a life that is pleasurable, one that is with as little conflict as possible. And it is ego-driven that we make such choices. But it's a nice thing that prior to our being born, we chose a life in which we would give ourselves opportunities to let go of anything that is less than who we truly are. Now, we can avoid it. We can pretend it's not there. We can embellish it. We can take on other roles and pretend to be others and do it in such a way that we are all the while still holding this energy in ourselves about ourselves that is not in harmony with our true nature. Pain. Let's look at pain. Here's what one person had to say. You may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats and the pain, so that you can know who you are and also know who you are not. So you can rise from and you can come out of it with a much better sense of self than before you went into it. So if any of you right now are experiencing pain in your life, and because you have devoted yourself to improving yourself, you meditate, you take on positivity, and you still have conflict, you still have challenge, you still are meted with defeat, and you're asking the question, why me? Then look to yourself and applaud yourself because it is because of you. You see, you are the one giving yourself the opportunity to grow from the challenges you have in your life right now. There are many different ways that we can meet challenges, see. There are many different ways that we can meet pain. There are many different ways that we can meet defeat. Some say you have to go to the absolute bottom of the barrel. You have to surrender entirely. And there's merit to that because, see, if in surrendering, you surrender your ego-driven need to be then you get to the place of what comes out is you. If you are able to do it without going to the absolute depths, then the same result, if you're there, will happen, and that is, you will let go of your identification of the ego needs, the ego-driven things that you have that cause you such turmoil in your life. Now you see, I'm also talking another language here, and that is the language of honest communication. Most of the time we, you'll edit this, we bullshit ourselves. <laughs> we don't really let ourselves in on what's going on. And that's because we're so afraid that if we do, then the egg is going to break and the yolk is going to run out and the chicken will never hatch. We have all these concepts inside operating in ourselves that are ego-oriented, that keep us locked into and afraid from simply being present with life. Now, here we are. We're all identifying with this on some level in some way. If you find yourself resisting it, then I'm encouraging you to pay attention to the resistance. Even to the extent of realizing that if you choose to walk away from this, it will be all right. Because you are an eternal being. And eventually, somewhere along the way, either in this lifetime or in another, you're going to actually fulfill your sense of respect to yourself. And you're going to live who you came here to be. You see, the earth life is such a marvelous opportunity to get real with ourselves and to have it reflected back in the choices that we make and what we have that shows up. Maybe you feel that you have gotten yourself so far in that it's impossible for you to do. Can you imagine being in Louis' position? 
I didn't tell you that when he was rescued by the Japanese off out of the sea, the first thing that he was done, he was brought on an island and thrown into a small, small, lower, lower than this to where he was just crawling in a space. Now I, personally, have an issue with claustrophobia. That got to me in a hurry. Now different things are gonna to get to you, you see, because of what you brought into this life. But the point is, is to in yourself realize you are an amazing being awaiting to be discovered by you. Others may see it in you and do their best to call it forth. But until you are willing to see it in yourself, you'll be blind to it and you will avoid it. The object of this is to help you come to a place of realizing you are a radiant being of light. And being light, you have the opportunity to radiate your true nature. And that's why the title of today's lecture is Shine On. Shine on no matter what is going on in your life. Shine and be the light that is, instead of shining yourself on. You see, when you go the other way and you shine yourself on, you live with that. All of us know it. All of us know it. When we get to the place of choosing to be in harmony with our true nature, then we have to dig in ourselves to find what our true nature is. It can be in the biggest clutter you ever imagined to try to find your true nature because of all of the other things that are there that you've put on, that you've attempted to be, that you've pretended to be, that you aren't. So, I told you, I told you today was gonna to get your attention. And it also was going to change your frame of reference so far as you living you in this life. So I bring it to the place of reminding you. You are already, already everything it's just a matter of you choosing to live it, to find out what that everything is. Shine on. Thank you. For more information about the Metaphysical Church of Enlightenment or the Rodin Foundation, please go to our website at www.rodin.org. If you have been inspired by the revelations shared in these podcasts, please donate to the Rodin Foundation's ongoing efforts to help others help themselves at www.rodin.org.